Hello everyone, my name is Jan Stempke and thank you for tuning in. This is the second talk of the first edition of Closure European Summertime. In the first talk, Arne did a great introduction to Mali and how it enables him to build data-driven applications. I would like to explore a similar theme, specifically type-driven data and data-driven types, but I will focus on static typing, specifically on Idris. Idris is a statically typed language, which comes with a REPL. I can load the file into this REPL and it type checks. In the REPL, I can play around with various values and see not only the value they evaluate to, but also the type of the result. I can also check the type of a value without evaluating it. An Idris module consists of top-level definitions. For example, a number is an int. I must start with a type, and that number is 2. I can now reload this file, and number is indeed 2. Alternatively, I can rely on Idris tooling to provide me this input. I can ask Idris to generate a definition for me, and then ask, hey, what is number right-hand side? And hopefully, it will tell me it's an integer. I hope it will. Yes, number right-hand side is an int. Let me keep this feedback window. It will come in handy. Number right-hand side is an int. Let's fill in some number. It works. I can also leave this number like this, undefined. And Idris will accept this file saying, hey, it type checks. You didn't provide a number. There is a hole as you can see. So if I try to evaluate, I will learn that there is no value assigned to this to this definition, but types are correct in place. So I can also talk about a list of numbers. And now if we ask Idris to create a definition for us and ask for types in this definition, tell us that the right-hand side is a list of integers. In this case, we can see there is a hole. We can fill, on, fill in this hole manually. And now we have the value we wanted. Or we can ask Idris to provide the definition automatically based on the types and tries to solve the constraints. And as you just saw, it filled in an empty list automatically for us. Let's have a list of three numbers inside and try to process this list somehow. For example, defining map function. Map is already in the standard library. So let's define our map, which given a function from A to B and the list of A's returns a list of B's. Again, let's ask for a skeletal definition. Idris automatically fills in for us. And note that lists in Idris are defined using two constructors. It's either a nil, like enclosure, or a cons cell, like enclosure. And we can use this information about possible constructors of a list to case split XS. And Idris automatically provides two possible pattern matching pattern matches for us. We can automatically let Idris fill this in, empty list. This happens to be correct. And if we ask Idris to fill in this hole, it says, how about empty list? It satisfies all the constraints. That's not what we wanted. What we actually wanted is something followed by, as in const onto our map fxs, right? And now let's ask Idris again, no such, how about here? Excellent. Notice that Idris has all the information it has here. And now it knows that something has to be a B. Can we make Idris come up with a solution to this puzzle on its own? Yes, it's figure out that something must be FX or can be FX, right? Notice how types have driven our implementation in this case. Before we go any further, 
I hope you noticed that the word that the address environment has similar characteristics to to a closure one. In closure, we have a conversation with the repo. We pass in an expression, a value, and we ask, hey, what does the value wait to? In address, it's sort of similar. I have this shell here, and I keep uh, either typing. I have to reload it. I either keep I keep typing expressions into this shell and get some kind of values, or consult the environment directly in the file. It's similarly interactive, and I like it a lot. Now let's move on to something more interesting. Idris has first class types. That means types occupy the same space as values. So five is an integer. An integer is a type. A list of ints is a type, but the list is a function which turns a type into a type. For example, it turns bool into a list of bools. Either, you might know it from Haskell, for instance, either it turns two types into a type. For example, it turns, it turns a string and a bool into a type, either string or bool. And there is another thing I'd like to show you. Vectors. Vectors and address are similar to lists. However, they have their length encoded as part of the type. So list is a function turning a type into a type, and vect is a function turning a net and a type into a type, net being a natural number. For example, it turns three and an int into a type of vectors of ints of length three. Let's revisit our numbers and turn them into a vector of length three of ints. And ask Idris, hey, is there a definition for this? Can you automatically fill in for us some kind of definition? And look how Idris figured out that this must contain exactly three elements. If we now try to reload this file with one extra element, we will learn that something doesn't work. It just expects something to be length plus one, where length is non-zero, when length is non-negative, and it ended up with zero, which is a mouthful for saying the length doesn't work. Let's represent map now. We will introduce vmap, which just like our map, turns, given a function, turns a vector of n elements into a vector of n b's. Notice that this n and this n are the same n. Skeletal definition, and again, case splitting on xs. We either have an empty vector or a vector with at least one element. In this case, Idris can on its own figure out, just like before, it is an empty list. But if we ask for types here, notice that we get the more precise information. It knows that right-hand side must be a vector of zero, zero elements. However, second line gets interesting. Notice how much information Idris has about values in the second line. And it knows exactly that the right-hand side must be a vector of len plus one, this is a successor of n elements, of type b. Let's see if Idris can automatically figure out the entire definition of this function for us. Have you seen that? Idris, automatically, given the constraints it had, figure out the entire implementation of map function, which we can now load and run on our numbers. And I hope that you see already that static typing as available to us in Idris is a completely different story. It's not only types driving our data in the sense of they constrain what kind of data we can assign to, to variables. It's more than that. 
using interest types, we can express far more precise constraints which drive our implementation. Idris can write itself. So this was type-driven data and type-driven implementation. And now I would like to move on to, to the exciting bit, that is to data driving your types. Let's talk about format strings. Format strings are something we know from a number of programming languages. They all look quite the same. And they all have the problem of being something coming from outside of the language, not being part of the host language. C, for example, has this printf function. And the only warning we have about misuse of its API is from the compiler. The tooling knows details of the DSL inside of the format string and informs us that we did something wrong. Similar story applies to SQL. This usage of SQL is wrong. We are not interpolating the right parameters into the format string, but the compiler accepts it without any complaints. And when I'm using a statically typed programming language, I'd rather have the compiler catch all those statically catchable details for me. Let's take a look at Idris. Let's consider a format function. A function which takes a format string and then what? Because we like a format function which takes such a format string and then takes corresponding types as arguments. So in this case, it must be some kind of number, let's say an integer. So we need something here and the result is a string. How do we do it? Well, let's firstly consider various format strings and express, express those format strings as data. So this is an empty format string. There is a format data type, which in this case, it's empty. Let's call it end, the end of the format string. Format string might have a constant, which doesn't need any data to fill in to interpolate. Let's call it a constant. And the constant is followed by the format string. Something can happen after the constant. For example, a string might be expected. And we expect a string and then we continue parsing. What happens if there is a number expected followed by the rest of the format string? So now let's say that we have such a format string and this corresponds to something like format as a format. And by that, I mean, we expect a number, then we have a constant empty string, and then we expect a string followed by the end of the string. It doesn't work because this should be a number. Num is already in the standard library. This doesn't work because I want to explicitly include this in the data type. Now let's parse, find a function, to find a function which parses this into a format string, into a format data type. So given beyond the function which parses a string into a format. String is not exactly what we want to work with because we'd rather work on a character by character uh, basis. So let's have a function which translates 
our format string into a list of characters and then parses those characters. Parse characters unpack string, where unpack turns a string into a list of characters. And unpack is a list of characters into a format. This doesn't work because I should have called this parse jar. And now this can be simplified using function composition. And now let's take a look at this function. The list of characters can be empty. This means we are at the end of the concept of the format string. Or there is something in the front. Let's consider various percentage mark notation options we have here. We can have a percent followed by a string, an S, which means that we will want a string followed by parsing the rest, right? We can apply the same for the number case. And then the things get a bit more exciting because we have to unpack this format string and package the constant value into this const into this const value. Let me jump into the future. So what we have here is the parse characters function, which after we reload, will be able to parse this entire format string into its data representation. You see what's happening. We expect a number, then there is a constant space or something longer, followed by something where we need to interpolate the string and then the end of the format string or a bang in the end. Very well. We have a way to par parse a format string into our data type. And now let's return to format again. So let's name this. This is our format. And what the actual type of the format function is, is type of format depending of FMT. Let's call this type four. And we're going to calculate the type of this function depending on, on the format. So let's start by, well, first of all, parsing format. And now we need a type four function, which given a format returns a type. Let's consult entries and ask for a skeletal definition and case split into possible formats. So when we go to the end or the format string is empty, it's simply a string. Formatting with an empty format returns a string. If it's a constant, C, followed by format F, the constant will get immediately interpolated, and then it all depends on the following format F. So this is the format for F. In case of string, we expect a string as an input, and then we continue calculating the type. Similarly, in this case, we expect a number, let's call it, let's, let's take an int, and continue parsing the format. So I hope you see what's happening. We are calculating the type of the format function based on the format data type, which is on, on the instance of this data type, which is then provided as the first argument of the function. Let's reload this and see what's happening. The type of the format function depends on the first parameter. So if we now say we have a format function which takes 
an empty string, it's a string, as in it doesn't require any further arguments. But if we expect a string, it expects a string. And if we now say price is number, it expects an int. If we parse it a string, it fails, it doesn't type check. If we provide a number, it's a string. We don't need to provide anything more because there is nothing following. However, if we expect the currency sign here, it still expects a string for the currency. Sure, we don't have the implementation of the function, but that's just a detail. The coolest thing is we have just defined a function whose type is data-driven. We drive the type of the function based on its first argument. And I find it fascinating because this shows that the data and types blend in, in, the, same, in the same universe in, in, in case of Idris. And this is, just, this is just the beginning. This is just a minimal demo of, of what's possible in this language. And you can get, you can express far more exciting things like this, calculating types at compile time based on data. And everything I showed you today comes from a book, from an excellent book from Edmund Brady, the author of Idris. I cannot recommend this book enough. The printf example, the format string example, and everything I showed before, you will find it in this, in this book, which not only introduces a fascinating approach to programming, but also is probably the best example of English technical writing I've ever read. Idris changes the way you look at, at static typing. And time spent with Idris and playing around with it is time well spent. And I encourage you to give it a spin and, and see how it will change the way you look at other programming languages. This is all I've got. Thank you for tuning in and until next time.